is our uh, X-ray component counter. Just like all of our system is using a closed ray X-ray source technology. It has the X-ray tube on top and the flat panel which is acquiring the image on the bottom. Now, at the same time, it also has a barcode camera inside which is detecting the position of the reels and at the same time also reading the internal labels that you want to read from the reels. So in order to use it, all you have to do is start here the counting mode. You press automatic. Automatic means it's going to detect automatically if you have small or big reels inside. All you have to do is place the reels inside. You close the door and the software is going to start automatically. Now it's going to grab an extra image. Once it grabs the image, it will start processing it to count the components. So you can see one, two, three, and four. It's able to count four small reels at the same time. It doesn't matter that the components from the reels are all different, so you're never limited to always counting the same type of component at the same time. Once it finish, finishes, it uh, found inside four small reels. So the next step is to start taking out the reels. So as you see, we don't have any labels printed yet. Now, we try to make our systems as pokayok as possible and uh, try to eliminate as much as possible the possibility of having the operator misplace a label. And, so, this, uh, and how accurate is it? The counting, you mean? 99.9. Mm. If you were to do that again, for that type of thing, then we'd get the same numbers? Exactly, or? exactly, exactly. So you can look even at the record. 2002, 2002, 2002. 2002, so we can run them as many times as you want. 2002, I'm pretty confident. This, this has been tested by clients with their reels multiple times, so no problem. So now the next step is to take out the reels. It doesn't matter which reel you take out. I'm gonna take out this one. And you see it's uploading the information and printing our label only for this one. Now I proceed to the next one. I take out, doesn't matter which one I take. I take it out, upload the information, is the new label and at the same time you can also set it up to communicate with your internal MES or ERP system. So when I take out the reel, when it appears here it sends the information to your MES as well and it prints your new label as well. Another nice feature is if you try to remove multiple reels at the same time you will have a timeout error. So you need to wait at least three seconds between removing two reels because otherwise it's gonna think that you took out exactly it's not physically possible in, three, in less than three seconds for you to take out the reel, put the new label on. Now, this is the fourth one. That's it. Now, if you want to scan, for example, trays, strips, big reels, no problem. All you have to do is put them inside. So I have to, for an example, a big reel inside an ESD bag. It doesn't matter that it's inside the ESD bag. I put it in. Same like before, I close the door, the software is going to start automatically and it's going to detect by itself that now it's a big reel. So you don't have to click, you don't have to switch between modes, you don't have to do anything. Once it finishes, for the big reel, it's going to print automatically because you can only have one big reel inside. Now, one of our biggest advantages is you don't have to do the library by yourself. So if you ever have a new component, let's say, because there's always new components coming to the market, which we not, maybe we're not able to count. You just have to take 15 scans, one five, and all you have to do is just rotate the reel a little bit between each scan. Then you send us the files and we have a new database release every two weeks. So once the update is ready, we send it to you and that's it. And another nice thing is that we have the database release with all the new components worldwide. So it's not gonna be just your components. Whatever new components we have worldwide, you always have access to them. What about sticks? You can count sticks, trays, it doesn't matter. It's able to count. What about loose bags of stuff? Let's try with this. I think it will be a bit difficult to pick it up because it doesn't have a barcode. But it should be able to count it without any problems. And also, if you look closely, you have different labels and quite multiple labels on all the reels. It's always reading only the barcode that you set it up to read. If it doesn't find it, when you filter it, it will say decode failed when you pick it out. 
and it will show you a pop-up where you have to input manually. Maybe the barcode that you're trying to read is deteriorated because the reels you're gonna count are most of the time gonna be coming back from your production line. Right, okay. So basically, as a complete system, we've utilized the IMS to know incoming goods. So exactly. Like code should be exactly. System. Exactly. So you already have all the information. You already have you everything. Somehow don't have it. You have to create a new barcode or part number or whatever on here. Yeah. You can do it very easily. Look, I'm gonna scan one backwards. I'm gonna do the scan. Right. And now, when I take it out, you have to scan it. And if it's the theory. If it's deteriorated, you can type it in manually. You can go from here, you type it in, you press OK, it prints the new label, you put it on, and that's it. So that label contains the part number of the reel along with the, obviously the amount of parts. It's pretty much up to how you select to set it up, because you can... So you can try and cram as much onto that as you like, yeah? So it depends. You can even compose barcodes just like on the IMS. You can have multiple information in one barcode. Now, if it's some information that you don't have on the label and you want to print it, we can very easily communicate with the IMS system. So when we scan, we can do a query for the unique idea of the reel and we can bring back the information from your database and print your internal label once again with the accurate quantity. And as far as hooking these systems up to ERP, MRP system, Yeah, that's a, a joint venture, right? I mean, it no. has to be some, there's no magic program, right? I would say it is a magic program. So we have this software developed by us. And by using this, we are able to communicate with any type of MES or ERP you have. So all of our systems are using the same interface. This one, the RAD, the IMS. So all of them are able to communicate with your MES. For example, this is a HTTP example, right? It's a web address. You're gonna tell us what is the web address, where to send the information. This is the content type. So depending if it's CSV, if it's a text, XML, JSON, whatever it is, you just select from here, which one works for you. Then you're gonna have the upload body, which this one is set up by your IT. They're gonna provide us this body. And you're gonna tell us exactly which are the variables. Variables meaning real ID, which is the unique ID we're reading from the reel, and quantity, which is the quantity we have from the reel. So every time you do a scan, you take out the reel, it runs this query, sends this information, real ID quantity to your database, and we can also have the response. So we have the response tab where we can process information you want to maybe send us back from your MES system. And this is a HTTP example. We have TCP IP. This is pretty similar. The only difference is you're gonna have an IP and a port, an open port where you can send the information. We have an export file. So for example, if you wanna generate a text, a CSV, an XML, whatever file you need, you select from here. You can set whatever name you want, if it's fixed, if it's the unique ID, if it's quantity, if it's operator, however you want, you can set it up from here. And you can also set up what you want that file to contain. So whatever you put here, this is what you're going to have in the new generated file. And uh, the last example I want to show you for now is an SQL. So if you have Microsoft SQL, we can very redo the upload from here. You're going to have E13.2, you're going to have the, which is the database, then which are the fields. And here are the actual values that are going to come from the counter. But here you can also use select. So if you want to bring up certain information, you can also do for database two queries at the same time. One would be when you scan it, bring up all the information from this unique ID. And then the second one would be post to post this information for that particular unique ID. So that would be the multi interface. And here again, you can select the sequence at the same time, first one, the first one, then the second one. So there's so many ways of dealing with this but we already have this developed, so it's just a matter of configuration yeah, according yeah, to the customer yeah. needs.